Sup, chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Well, it's not every day that you see the name of my channel, Hair Cafe, in a medical journal, but that's exactly what has just happened. Here's the article where it happened. It's titled, quote, The Manosphere in Men's Health, Unpacking the Links Between Online Communities, Body Dysmorphia, and Erectile Dysfunction, unquote. Unfortunately, it is a pretty negative take on me and my content, but the ironic thing is, is that I actually agree with the premise of this article. I think that online misinformation, whether it's spread by the Manosphere or any other online silo, actually does promote body dysmorphia and can even cause problems like erectile dysfunction. If someone is convinced that taking finasteride can cause erectile dysfunction that is permanent, then the first time that person wakes up without morning wood or doesn't instantly feel aroused the next time a hot woman walks by, then of course, of course they're going to assume that finasteride has destroyed their sex life forever. This is especially true in young Young men, because in young men, the majority of cases of erectile dysfunction are actually psychological in nature, not physical. So it really doesn't take much to cause erectile dysfunction in young men with hair loss, especially those who are insecure and vulnerable to misinformation online. After all, hair loss itself can ruin the confidence of men, and confidence is closely tied to sexual function. There is plenty of fear-mongering online, so we're definitely off to a good start with this article, but for some strange reason, the author of this opinion piece decided decided that the big problem here is actually me. The author thinks that I'm one of the ones spreading misinformation, which of course is completely wrong. On the contrary, I'm one of the few people online trying to counteract all the misinformation that is rampant about treating hair loss. But let me go ahead and back up for a bit and just summarize this article, which is actually pretty short. Let's go ahead and start with the abstract of the article. The author first points out that, quote, anxiety, depression, and body dysmorphic disorder, particularly muscle dysmorphia, have surged in recent years exacerbated by online communities within the manosphere that glorify hypermasculinity and physical perfection, unquote. He then says, quote, These forums frequently promote the use of anabolic steroids and finasteride, substances that carry significant health risks, including hypogonadism, endocrine disruption, and sexual dysfunction, unquote. So, the author here is actually lumping together two completely different things. He's talking about anabolic steroid use for muscular development on one hand, and then treating hair loss on the other hand, as if these are both a way to achieve hypermasculinity and physical perfection, as he puts it. First of all, stopping hair loss is not about achieving hypermasculinity or physical perfection. That is a total straw man argument. Stopping hair loss is about stopping a process that is known to cause anxiety and depression in of itself. There is, after all, strong evidence that hair loss is associated with decreased social status and decreased income, not to mention, of course, that women generally prefer men with hair. These statements are all backed up by research that I'll link below. Not only that, the author is comparing taking anabolic steroids for muscular development, which is not an FDA-approved use for those drugs, with finasteride, which is an FDA-approved treatment for hair loss. Finasteride was approved by the FDA for treating hair loss way back in the year 1997, five years after it was first approved for treating an enlarged prostate. Topical minoxidil, which isn't mentioned in this article, was approved for treating hair loss even earlier, in 1988. Finasteride is a standard medical treatment that has been used by millions of men and is still to this day commonly prescribed by doctors specifically for the purpose of treating hair loss. I don't know why the author of this paper feels that there could possibly be any comparison between online sites encouraging anabolic steroid use and YouTube channels like mine that are simply spreading the word that effective hair loss treatments do exist and they are safe and effective for the vast majority of people. The author then name checks more plates, more dates, and gives other examples of strength training YouTubers. Now, Derek, he's a hugely successful influencer in business man with over 2 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, so I seriously doubt Derek gives a shit about what this guy thinks about him. But the author of this article uses all these different sites along with hair loss channels like mine, and he lumps them together as being part of the manosphere. He says that while some sites offer positive advice, other sites promote extreme views that reinforce hypermasculinity and body image concerns amongst men. I completely reject this characterization of my channel, though, as I consider my site as being one that offers positive hair loss treatment advice. I I've even recommended some non-pharmaceutical options for treating hair loss on my channel like hair systems. I even made a video about it recently which I'll link below. So I definitely hold no judgment in how people choose to deal with their hair loss. Some people prefer to just embrace the bald look and that's completely fine. I want people, including bald men, to feel happy and confident in themselves. But my channel specifically is meant to be an educational resource for people who make the decision to save their hair. It's the decision I made for myself and it's the one I am the most knowledgeable about. 
out, and I know that hair loss cannot be stopped without the use of powerful pharmaceutical interventions like finasteride, but evidently, the author thinks that my breakdown of the scientific research on hair loss is promoting extreme views and that I am reinforcing hypermasculinity and body image concerns amongst men. So, I'm going to go ahead and skip over the part of the article that addresses the problems of anabolic steroid use. I am, after all, libertarian on the subject of drugs, so I definitely don't have anything against adults who decide to use anabolic steroids, but it's not something I promote on my channel, and it's clear that there are significant risks involved with anabolic steroids, but most people already know that, so there's no point in covering this. So anyways, the article then switches to finasteride. It says, quote, Similarly, the widespread adoption of finasteride as a treatment for androgenic alopecia amongst young men raises concerns about sexual side effects, although it is significantly less risky than anabolic steroids, unquote. So, here the author seems to be very critical of young men who decide to treat their hair loss with finasteride, though at least he admits that taking finasteride is significantly less risky than anabolic steroids. Of course, I agree with them. But even that is a massive understatement. The safety profile comparison between the two drugs are not even on the same planet. Even in this article, the author quotes that the risk of sexual side effects from finasteride is in the range of 2.1 to 3.8 percent. He is quoting from this article here. But he doesn't even mention that this very same article also points out that side effects occur early in treatment and return to normal when stopping treatment and often even when continuing treatment. This is something I've said many times on this channel too. The author then quotes from the prostate cancer prevention trial that included over 17,000 men. These men were getting finasteride at a dose of 5 milligrams per day, which is the standard dose for treating an enlarged prostate. Despite this higher dose, these men had only a slight increase in the incidence of sexual problems versus placebo, and the effects diminished over time. And keep in mind, this is five times the standard dose for treating hair loss. But then, he brings up one of the most well-known advocates of post-finasteride syndrome, Dr. Earwig, who claims that finasteride causes persistent side effects, though at least the author of the paper admits that Dr. Earwig's study is limited because of selection bias and recall bias. Yeah, that's an understatement too. So I have to say that despite his grievances with me, the author of the paper actually has viewpoints that are very similar to mine. He says what I say all the time, specifically that the incidence of side effects from finasteride is low, that the side effects get better over time, and he is skeptical of the research claiming that finasteride causes permanent side effects. Because of that, I'm really skeptical if he's even ever seen my content at all, because his issues with me are based on things he's either imagined or maybe things he has heard other people say about me. Because if he has ever watched any of my videos before, then he would have realized that my evaluation of the data is not that far off from his own analysis. However, he goes on to say, quote, one relatively popular YouTube channel and online community known as Hair Cafe promotes highly warped viewpoints regarding finasteride, being a risk-free drug that dihydrotestosterone is a trash hormone despite there being significant evidence DHT is involved in sexual development, sexual function, and cognitive function, unquote. So, now I know for sure that he's never watched any of my videos before. Either that or he has the memory of a goldfish. I don't know what his warped viewpoints are that he is talking about. I've never claimed that finasteride or any other drug for that matter is free of side effects. That's completely bogus. You don't even need to watch my videos to know that. You can just look at the goddamn titles and thumbnails of my videos to know that I do not stand for that. I've made videos with titles like what to do if you get side effects from finasteride and how to reduce finasteride side effects. So let me ask you something. Why would I make videos like that if I thought that finasteride had no side effects? Just take a look at the comment section of my videos. In every single video, there's somebody who asks me, you know, I'm taking finasteride, uh, should I lower the dose I'm getting side effects? And I reach out and I try to help them because I do believe that finasteride can cause side effects. I've never denied that. In fact, if anything, I've been criticized for going too far in reporting the side effects from hair loss drugs, especially in the case of oral minoxidil and telling people not to use oral minoxidil. And that's pissed off a lot of my viewers, I gotta tell you. I've actually lost subscribers because of my stance on oral minoxidil, so it's not like I'm claiming hair loss drugs are all completely safe. It's up to my viewers to decide whether or not they think the risk to reward ratio is worth it. So it is true that I am the one who coined the phrase DHT is a trash hormone, and that may sound hyperbolic to your average layman, but I think in the case of DHT, it is completely merited. DHT in adults causes hair loss, acne, prostate enlargement, and even cardiovascular problems. So let me ask you something, Chums. What other hormone besides DHT at normal physiological levels causes as many medical problems and health problems as DHT? Lots of hormones can cause problems at super physiological levels, including testosterone, but DHT is the only hormone that commonly causes health and medical problems even at normal physiological 
physiological levels. DHT is literally the only hormone that does this because it is a trash hormone, as I've said many times, and I stand by that. I know for sure this guy hasn't watched my content, because if he had, he would know that when I say that DHT is a trash hormone, I am talking about in the context of DHT's role after adolescence. If he had watched my videos, he would know that I do not deny that DHT has an important role in fetal development and sexual development in adolescence going through puberty. However, the supposed evidence that DHT is involved in sexual function and brain function is not supported by any research whatsoever. So, to back up his claims about DHT, he cites a review article, this article here. This article makes the case that it is androgen deficiency in elderly men that causes cognitive impairment, but the androgen that is important is actually testosterone, not DHT. The only clinical evidence the article cites for DHT having any role is this article here. This was a database study comparing the incidence of dementia in older men taking a 5-year inhibitor like finasteride versus men not taking a 5-year inhibitor. However, this study actually concluded that there was not a causal association between the use of 5-year inhibitors and developing dementia since since the longer the men were on 5-year inhibitors, the less the risk was. I actually covered that article in great detail in a video that I'll link below, and in case the author of this article is watching this video, maybe you should watch it too, and also, maybe you should watch some of my other content while you're at it the next time you decide to comment on my work so you don't strawman me again. So, there are a lot of other arguments people have made to claim that DHT is not a trash hormone, but the author of the paper we're talking about doesn't mention any of them, and I covered all these arguments in my DHT is a trash hormone playlist which thankfully now you can actually look at because YouTube finally restored all my playlists that got nuked when my channel was temporarily taken down about a month ago. So I think in picking on my channel, he's not really bolstering his argument at all because he is picking on the one channel that probably conforms the very least of what one would consider to be the manosphere. In fact, if you were to really examine the online manosphere, then you'd find that they're the most toxic and anti finasteride people you can possibly find on the internet. You'll find that the vast majority of them take the exact opposite view of finasteride that I do. If you look at some of the biggest figures of the Manosphere who have commented on finasteride in the past, like Andrew Huberman, Joe Rogan, and Andrew Tate, they are all totally against using finasteride and push the whole post-finasteride syndrome narrative that has never been scientifically validated. Just go ahead and listen to this commentary from Team 3D Alpha about DHT, a channel that has about four times as many subscribers that I do. I could make a whole video on DHT if you guys want because it's such a misunderstood hormone. You do not want to black your DHT. I'd rather lose all of my hair than lose my DHT. That's another sign that masculinity is on the attack because now we have normalized blacking DHT. Blacking the most androgenic masculine hormone in the human body. So what you just heard right there, that's what the narrative about finasteride from the online manosphere is really like. They claim that DHT is an alpha chad hormone and they think that the normalization of drugs like finasteride is proof that masculinity is under attack. I think the real reason the manosphere is so opposed to finasteride is because the community is composed mostly of insecure internet dwelling dorks who have fragile egos and feel a compulsion to constantly prove to the world that they're more masculine than they really are. So if you go to any of these online communities and bring up the subject of finasteride, it's inevitable that at least someone's going to claim that finasteride is a training drug and that real men don't suppress their DHT level since DHT is a real Chad alpha hormone. But for as tough as they like to act, they're actually some of the biggest pussies on the internet. So to better explain that, let me ask you something, Chooms. What do you think is the most badass, most masculine character trait any man can possibly have? Take a moment to think about that. The answer to that question is bravery. In every human society that has ever existed throughout history, there has never been a trait as admired and cherished in human beings as much as valor. That's why we hold veterans and other intrepid people in such high esteem, because people honor and respect their courage and their selflessness. The online manosphere of internet tough guys, on the other hand, is full of dickless milksops who are completely lacking in any courage whatsoever. They're so cowardly that they don't even have the balls to save their own hair, so to compensate for their cowardice, they project their femininity out on people who do take finasteride by accusing them of not being real men or by taking a tranny drug. Refusing to take finasteride is not manly in the slightest. It is cowardly and a sign of weakness. When people look at you, nobody's going to care what your DHT levels are, but everybody is going to notice and judge you for the hair on your scalp. The people who have the courage to save their hair will be much better off than the cowardly alpha males who didn't have what it takes. So, if anyone is interested 
interested in actually saving their hair, then the last place I'd ever recommend them going is to any influencer who's part of this online manosphere, since more likely than not, they will try to shame them for wanting to suppress their DHT, which is a hormone that they falsely think is critical for masculinity, which of course it isn't. That's why 98% of people can suppress it without having any issues whatsoever. If people were to suppress 70% of their testosterone, then I guarantee you that 100% of them would get side effects and they'd feel them immediately. So don't ever compare DHT to testosterone. So even though this article was an attack on me, I actually have nothing against the author of this paper, although he sure as hell seems to have a problem with me, which is fine, but I'd prefer it if he tried to hold me accountable for beliefs I actually hold. It seems to me that this guy is a medical student who published this opinion piece in a journal that requires payment up front for publishing articles. So this guy was so adamant in having his views about me known that he was actually willing to pay money to have it published in a scientific journal. And these scientific journals aren't cheap. Sometimes it can cost $1,500 just to publish an article. I mean, he could have posted this anywhere else for free, like Substack or Twitter or Facebook, but I guess he felt that by getting it published in a scientific journal, it would give it the veneer of legitimacy, even though his interpretation of my views on finasteride and DHT is completely wrong. So I won't share his picture from his social media since I'm not a petty and spiteful fuck who believes in retaliation, but I will say that he does have a completely full head of hair. So it's very easy for someone like him to claim that I'm downplaying the risk of finasteride, since the decision to actually take finasteride is one he'll likely never have to make. But in case he is watching this video, and I hope he is, I would encourage him to actually watch my content. If he did, he would have realized that I use the scientific method in all of my videos. I report the medical literature on each subject, and I give detailed references for each video, and I engage with as many people as I possibly can in the comment section. And if I do get things wrong, I own up to it always. I'm not trying to cause people to have unrealistic expectations about their hair. I'm just trying to save what Mother Nature in all of her cruelty is trying to take away from us. Having a full head of hair does not make you hyper-masculine. If anyone thinks they have to seek hyper-masculinity, then chances are they're not masculine to begin with and they never will be. Having hair is just the normal state that most men would prefer to be in, no matter how masculine they are. It's what we had before going through puberty up until our early adulthood, and it is part of our identity that we don't want to lose. There is nothing wrong with using modern medicine to preserve that which is ours by right. Whether or not people actually think the risk is worth it is completely up to them to decide, of course, and if someone decides that even the small risk of side effects from finasteride isn't worth it, that's fine. I don't begrudge them for it, just so long as they don't try to shame and bully other people who want to save their hair, as we often see in the online manosphere. In fact, I have to admit, I actually admire people who can just shave their head and be happy with it, because that's probably not something I could personally do, because I value my hair way too much. But for the people out there who do go bald, and they find confidence in their newfound identity, and they don't feel a need to constantly shame and berate and question the masculinity, of the people who do choose to save their hair, I genuinely admire that. God bless all of them. But for the people who want to save their hair, they definitely deserve to know the truth about the drug's risk and benefits. And with all the rampant misinformation online out there about finasteride, including the misinformation that this article's author just contributed to, I think it is more important than ever that people have access to hair loss information that will allow them to make an informed decision about their health care. That's all I want to do with this channel, because it's something that I didn't have access to when I first started my hair loss journey, and it cost me a lot of hair and a lot of money. I'm just here to make sure that future generations have access to the hair loss resources that I wish had been available when I was a young man. So I hope if the word hair cafe ever appears in another medical journal, it will be in a more positive context and my views will be presented more accurately. If someone wants to do an article on the toxic manosphere, I could definitely give them a bunch of suggestions of channels that would fit the bill perfectly, because I've been in the sewer of the internet and I know just how unfair fathomably toxic it can be. But in the meantime, Chooms, all I can do right now is continue to do research and keep you all posted on the latest information on treating hair loss and other related subjects. So I'll be back with some more preem content very soon. So until then, have a preem week, hair loss witchers. God bless all of you.